Hello, pretties. My name is Ember Witch, and welcome back to Colonel Sanders. Just as your moment grows intimate, you're, interru you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. Orko? Pork monster. It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you wouldn't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. Oh, I know what it's like to like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? <laughs> Aw, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant monster in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I s switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. Were you human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever. But I was still a student. One day, some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook? Huh. Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg you, respect it. You're a, pow you're a powerful chef, chef, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would treat cheat them through sorcery and guile. Guile? Yeah. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Okay. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Ember, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway so we can discuss? A personal invite. You couldn't imagine what Xander's home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, he has a chicky. Stepping inside Xander's home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It's like you look... It's... It looks like you live such an exciting life, Sanders. Every... Yeah, every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, and never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there's something. It's just a side dish, but I've been tinkering with. But to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Xander's eyes perk up as he starts to wonder, wonder about the dish that you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now that you got him right where you want him, should you reveal your new creation to him? Or keep it a secret, just for you? <sighs> I think it's the- I think it's gonna be the potatoes. So, I'm probably just gonna tell him. Because it shows that you trust him. So, yeah. Honestly, I just wanna end up dating him because I just don't want the Ashley bitch to have him. <laughs> I can care any either less, you know, even less. But you decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach for your lunch bag with for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. Of course. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Sanders, um, eh, hideaway. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Magnificent! <laughs> Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to this last bite? I'd like to say, have it around so I can admire this taste later, think back on its moment. 
Could you offer... You could offer to make him more, but he seems a very sentimental kind of guy. He seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize now it would be the perfect time to do some sleeping. What? Around the room are various items that you can look at, closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on them to learn more about the colonel. Okay. Let's see this one over here. Must be where he keeps the secret recipe. Okay. You think for a moment. What number is important to Sanders? Then it dawns on you. You turn the dial to 11 11 11. The safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Hmm. <laughs> can they be. Can chicken be prepared sushi style? My god. Tap on. I don't know. Okay. Uh. I want to click on the chicken, but. There. Take a closer look at the large urn sitting nearby the pedestal. On a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty. But when you wipe it off, you can read the encryption. It says, Here lie the ashes of my past careers and business failures. God. Poor guy. Okay. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize... It isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped onto the chicken's foot reads, The true state... The, the true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Oh my god. Oh. Tap on that. Okay. I, I wanna be nosy. I'm gonna look over here first. You gaze out of the window across the vast lake and the mountain ridge beyond. Just then, the ghost pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. How would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now, it's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost is swept out with the breeze. Aww. Um, one of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Sanders, standing with a friend. They hold, they hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing with them. That is not what's in that image. You look closely and you see the short encryption. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Photo appears to be Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe that's where he discovered one of the secret herbs and spices. Uh, an adorable little baby crawls on the floor, across the floor. From the goatee and the mustache combo he sports, you figure it must be Sanders himself. Oh my God, poor kid. Or maybe it's the drumstick that seem he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames baby pictures of themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of a company they founded on, right? <laughs> oh, man. Since a candle, you pick it up and definitely and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched color? Piece of wood floating on a lake? Summer of 69? <laughs> No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's blank. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just a silvery color. It's actually made of spun silver. Hmm. You open the door to, to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off the hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. Oh my god. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Okay, I'm sorry, but if you're like walking around this man's house looking through his stuff and like putting on his clothes and just like, like smelling it, you're a freak. You're disgusting. And you need some therapy. Before you could- ah 
Before you can look any further, you hear Sander is returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual, but he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. You've got to take it off. You fess up, tell him the truth. You decide now is your moment to make your big move. Um, tell him you're cold. Fuck it, just tell him. Whoa, 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 isn't that- It isn't that kind of game. What? Not that we blame you for trying, but still. Wait, what? What? I thought this was a dating game. I was gonna tell him my feelings. Unless big move is supposed to be something else. Okay. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. Really? I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get it get in the way of my dreams. Wow. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such emotional breakthrough gives you a pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Ember? I honestly, I honestly think that this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. Wow. You talk late into the night and drift into a slumber. Dream sequence. Okay, that's cool. You wake up to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Do you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will tell. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Sanders emerges from his room, from the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters with the slight, with the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. Could have been at least chickle, chicken and waffles. Meticulous. You taste Sanders' food and it makes you and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Would you say that we're a perfect match? How presumptuous. My my cuisine and your taste buds, that is? Oh god. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the Greatest gift to cookery? <laughs> eh, sure. You know, I think we might be, might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool at the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. Oh my god. And with the right and with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings. You're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only word you can only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The university waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is waiting for you. Where have you been? I. Because I have one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk about it, but I can't- I couldn't find you. I got worried that something might have happened to you. It's okay, I just... But now it turns out you're fine! And I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... Will you not believe what happened to me at after school- You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I could believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> but he just kind of, he's just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know a little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but quickly spiraled out of control. Oh God. Did she just say skydiving? As if... It's a typical first date to go on with talking pressure cooker. <laughs> and now, I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Modeling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. 
and I went on a date too, back to Sanders' house, where we spent the night. Where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam offers support. Offers to support you no matter what you do. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. Oh, oh God. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop. Though, he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, it's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh my god. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. Wow. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is the dog. Is a dog and a treat. Ah. Uh... You can get your swirly dip too. Oh no. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person in the school. There is a horse that. Okay, what the fuck? Is there a horse that Sanders rides to school? But who would dare pick on such a gentle, beautiful creature? You got some nerve, Ember, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are about to boil over. A naturally intuitive person. He senses that something has been going on. Is that- is everyone excited for the final day of school? Ember, I- how's your hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <gasps> Aren't you concerned with my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Wow. Technically, I don't believe a winner has been decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Hmm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? Ew. It was clear you're passionate about your food. Clear that you're passionate about your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. <laughs> Excuse me, Ember. I am more than capable to speak for myself. <sighs> Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk into class. Uh, he's, he, he was annoyed. I'm always interested in discussing fine art, the fine art of foods. See you inside, Ember. Oh my god. Annoyed by Sanders' inability to see Ashley, for who you know she it really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ash, uh, Ashley, you take out a spell book you received yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, what's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in magic stuff. A grimoire? A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it wasn't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open the page, covered with arcane writings, cast only in case of a stream, extreme emergency. It sounds like it says around the edges of the page. I could use the spell here. It says that it will erase anyone I choose from my memories. If I scrub out Sanders, it would be prob it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. Really? That's way too drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Are we really erasing Sanders? Are we serious right now? All this fucking work? You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. A pretty good excuse to try it out. Uh, yeah, no, we're not gonna do the spell. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. 
I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up, and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Wow. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. I'm gonna wait to see what happens. Sprinkle stops his stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on a cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs out the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Oh god. Terrence? I told you never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you. Terrence! <laughs> oh god. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. Squirrel looks over, but doesn't even say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? <laughs> I love the dog. <sighs> you better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied with his presence has been felt as presence has been felt not only by Terrence, but by other by any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This is actually brings me up to an important point. Thank you, Ember, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whispers and no world whirs and sparks coming from the back of the classroom. I told you save it for after class. Oh. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Oh shit, he's angry. But no, you had to show off for your cool uh to your cool kid friends Jeff and Joanne. J and J forever. Oh my god. Watch us from a Watch us form a triangle in mid-air as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Oh, Yeah, well, that doesn't make it great- make it a great date. Oh, And take Jeff and Joanne with you. You can hold hands as you pedal down a mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps of his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. <gasps> oh god! Is Clank dead? No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over a final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Time test time approaches. See you in the arena. But before you can even think about the upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby that needs a pep talk. Hey Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is delicious, is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if it's the source of her frustration. Even if the source of the frustration is a silly boy. I know that 
I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs. But she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up with Sanders on Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe. Sorta. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else wants to be- whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank, or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year. So what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest, you know? Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea on how you were going to spend your time before the exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van and the supposed Man Man and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through the quick test of a recipe that you've been working on, Ember's Famous Chicken Pot Pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie out of the oven, but as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Sanders. Ember, what are you doing here? There's still time before the before the exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visual visualizing success. I'm looking at my situation, my my station, and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? It's not bad. I was hoping that you were here cooking something delicious. I was hoping you were here cooking something. Is that an insult? You usually are happy to share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get into your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decided that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but the decision is hard to stick with when the timer goes off behind you. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie for 400 yards. Jesus Christ! It's an oddly specific distance, <laughs> but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew I was a pot. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, a chicken pot pie, with all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ah, no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it was probably it will probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. Okay, I love how anime food is drawn because it's so good looking. Just amazing. Oh! <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking and how and I could eat it eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. Jesus. That is, except to cook with everything you got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. Alright. I'm sure we're right at the ending. But, um, I'm gonna leave it here. So, if you like what you saw, please catch the spell on the like button, and don't forget to share and subscribe. My name is Ember Witch, and I'll see all you pretties in the next video. Bye.